use your imagination. The opportunities for your voiceover business are literally everywhere. You're a voice actor. You're an entrepreneur. You're a VOpreneur. Welcome to the Everyday VOpreneur Podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. Your number one marketing tool is your voiceover demos. When you're posting them online, you want to be sure they're playable on any device and with any browser. The Voice Sam Player does exactly that. Sign up at msvo.me slash msvoicesam and receive three months of Voice Sam for the price of one. Sign up now at msvo.me slash msvoicesam. The VOpreneur Podcast. Hey, it doesn't suck. Not as funny as Conan. Not as cute as Seth Meyers. Not as smart as Colbert. But he's one of us, and that counts for something. Here's Mark Scott, the original Everyday VOpreneur. Hey, what's up? And welcome to another episode of the Everyday VOpreneur podcast. And I am so thankful to have you here today and really looking forward to diving into this episode on old school marketing techniques. I think this is going to be a fun one. And I've got some great stories to share with you in this episode as well. Before we dive in, I want to say thank you for subscribing wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. Thank you for listening on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, and of course for listening every week at vopreneur.com. And I also want to ask you for one small favor. Could you go to iTunes, look up the Everyday Vopreneur podcast, and leave a review on iTunes? I would really appreciate it. And I would also appreciate if you would share this episode on your social media feeds. Share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter. You can share the link, vopreneur.com. All right, so let's dive into this episode where we are going to talk about old school marketing techniques. And I think this is going to be a fun one because we very much live in a digital world. And everybody thinks about all of the 5,000 different ways there are, 10,000, 100,000 different ways there are to market yourself online. We're looking at email. We're looking at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, Vimeo, YouTube. 400 other social networks that I've never even heard of and probably don't know anything about. There are so many different ways to get yourself out there online. And there are so many different ways to connect with people online. You're sending emails, you're posting on social. Maybe some of you are doing AdWords with Google or sponsored posts through social media. And that's all well and good. But I think that there's an opportunity that you might be missing if that is the only place that you are focusing all of your efforts. And I want you to stick with me for a minute because this might sound a little bit crazy to some people. Sometimes you got to go outside of the box. Sometimes you got to go in the opposite direction of the flow. That's the other thing, right? If you're moving in the same direction as everyone else, if you're doing the same thing everyone else is doing, it's going to be that much harder for you to stand out. If a hundred different people are emailing the same production company every day or every week, you are going to have to be that much better than all of the rest in order to get your message to stand out. So are there ways that you can move against the flow? Are there ways that you can take some of your marketing efforts offline? Is there a place for old school marketing of your voiceover business in 2019 in the internet age and the digital world? I absolutely believe there is. I want you to think about something for a minute. Every day you go and check your mail. Maybe that mail gets delivered to the mailbox at the end of your driveway. Maybe that mail gets delivered by the postman right to your door. Maybe you're like me. You got to go to the post office and you pick it up from a post office box. Every day we go and get our mail and we open up our mail. And what do we find? We find junk. We find flyers and we find bills. And every single time that we open up our mailbox and we sift through the junk and the flyers and the bills, what do we think about? Oh, yay, more junk, more flyers, more bills. It's pretty hard to get excited about this stuff. Same old, same old, every single day in your mailbox. But what if something came in your mailbox that wasn't junk or flyers or bills? Do any of you still get handwritten cards, maybe from a relative or a family member, you know, from your mom or your dad for your birthday? Or what about Christmas? Do you still get Christmas cards? There are still people that send Christmas cards. 
How does it make you feel when you get something in the mail that isn't junk or flyers or bills? You get pretty excited about it, don't you? And when you see that somebody actually took the time to send you a handwritten something or other, that makes you even more excited. Let's be honest, okay? Show of hands. Who still has the ability to do actual handwriting? I will be the first to admit that thanks to the computer, my handwriting is practically illegible. Like, I almost feel like I forget how to do it. It's that bad because it's been that long since I had to do it. And what about, you know, have you ever done it and then you get like three sentences in and then your hand is cramping already because it's just not a muscle that gets worked anymore? When somebody takes the time to send you a handwritten anything, that's pretty special. In 2019, that is pretty special. That is something that is going to stand out. And I really believe that that is an old school marketing technique that can actually pay off. And I've seen it in my own business, and I'm not the only one. Listen to this great story from Dana Rizzo. Back at the end of 2017 and the beginning of 2018, I decided to try marketing in a different way. I traditionally had been doing all electronic marketing, emails, LinkedIn, etc., which certainly helped build my business to where it was, but I wanted to try something different. So I decided to try sending out postcards, hard copy postcards. I had postcards made that looked very similar to my business cards, but they are much larger, of course. They're about five by seven. So I mailed them out to a bunch of local and regional companies in my area. One in particular was a regional healthcare system, and I did not know the name of the person that I needed to contact, only his title, marketing director. So I mailed the postcards, one of which went to that marketing director. Six months later, I received an email from that marketing director asking if I would be interested in becoming the voice of that healthcare system. He had, back in January of 2018, received my postcard. He kept the postcard sitting on his desk where he saw it every single day until he had a need for me. When he received the postcard, he went right to my website, listened to my demos, and really liked them. When I gave him a call, he was very complimentary about my demos. We also chatted about the fact that I'm local, and he said, well, hell, local. And I said, only about 10 minutes away. So I went and met with him in person with he and his marketing team. And since June of 2018, I've been the voice of that healthcare system. I record all of their radio and television commercials. A postcard leads to a commercial campaign and ongoing work. I love it so much. In my own business, I signed with my first agent as a result of a postcard. Now, I had never reached out to this agent before. I saw them at VO Atlanta, had an opportunity to sit in on a session, really appreciated some of the things that they said at VO Atlanta. And so when I got back from VO Atlanta, I took the time to write a handwritten postcard thanking them and, you know, specifically mentioning a piece of advice that they had given that I thought was really great. And then I put it in the mail and that was it. It was literally just a thank you card. But that thank you card prompted a response, which prompted an opportunity for an interview. And when I went into the office to interview, that postcard was actually hanging on their bulletin board. It really stood out because it's not something that you get every day. And so I want you to think about some of these opportunities that may be a little bit old school or may be a little bit outside of the box. And just like Dana with her commercial campaign, just like me with my agent, maybe a postcard campaign is something that you want to look at. And I'm not saying that you're going to go out and you're going to buy 500 postcards from Vistaprint and then you're going to just, you know, blanket send those out to people in a generic form. I'm talking about being strategic with it. Dana was strategic with the postcard that she sent, and it produced the result that she was hoping for it to produce. What if you went to the local printer? Yeah, I know. It's probably going to cost you a little bit more. But you're also, A, forming a relationship on a local level. B, getting connected to somebody in your community who is heavily involved in advertising and marketing and knows a lot of people. And C, Opening yourself up for referral possibilities, and I speak from experience, I've actually booked jobs courtesy of a local printer who I had some of my stuff printed through. So, so many good things can happen from getting connected with that local printer, doing it at a local level. Don't just think about trying to save money and do it cheap. Think about what is best for your business in the long term. But you go out, you get some of these postcards made up, you pick some 
clients that you've been working on, maybe some leads that you want to reach out to, maybe some prospects that you've been going back and forth with and are looking to take it to the next level, and you get strategic about it. And you set a goal for yourself that you're going to sit down and you're going to write 10 of these a week, which is totally doable. That's two a day. And you're going to send out some old school postcards in the mail. And you're going to open yourself up potentially to some really great opportunities because not everybody's doing it and it's going to stand out. As crazy as it sounds, I think in 2019 that postcards have the potential to stand out even more so than a traditional email. Think about it. The other thing I want you to think about is opening yourself up to all of the opportunities that exist out there. So I want you to determine who your customer is and what is the best way to reach them. And this is something that you're going to have to put some time in because it's not just a generic answer. You're going to have to think very strategically about the type of work that you want to do, the type of people that you want to work with. Maybe you've already got some companies or some brands in mind, but determine who your customer is and determine the way to reach them. And then I want you to ask yourself, how can I be where they are at? So if those people primarily are existing on Twitter, that's how you can be where they're at. If they're primarily existing on Instagram, that's how you can be where they're at. Maybe these are companies that exist right within your own community and you're trying to book work at a local level within your own town or within your city. Are there networking events that can put you where they are at? Or could you do something totally outside of the box to put yourself where they are at? I don't know if this next story classifies specifically as an old school marketing technique, but it is absolutely an outside of the box marketing technique. And I love this story from Shelly Stephen. The Chamber of Commerce is having a golf outing that runs right past my house. I'm in the middle of the 10th fairway. Now, they're charging $125 to sponsor a hole, which really isn't bad, but I don't have it. So what I thought, well, I wonder if I can make my own sign. So what I decided to do was take my little brother's scan and cut, which is similar to a cricket machine you might have heard of or a silhouette, took the file with my business card layout that my handy-dandy logo creator created for me, dumped it in there, cut out all the little letters, all the little symbols and everything for my business card, split it into two panels, one that fits on either side of the outside of my patio doors. So I've got my business card going across two patio doors from far away on the golf course that probably looks just fine, I hope, I think. Then underneath my one side of the business card, I say, welcome golfers. Underneath the other side, I put a QR code. Now that QR code goes to a link for my website. I've also got it going through Google tracking so that it tracks how many people actually snapped on that Google QR code. So there you have it. I wouldn't say free advertising, a little effort, but not too bad. I told Shelly that she won the award for being the first repeat guest on the Everyday Vopreneur podcast. Shelly was featured in an earlier episode, but that's because Shelly does some, some just crazy cool things. Who would have thought to make a banner to put on their patio door so that you could get people's eyes who were playing in a local Chamber of Commerce golf tournament? That is one of the ways that you can put yourself where you are at. That is one of the ways that you open yourself up to all of the opportunities that are out there. You have to think beyond the inbox. You have to think beyond social media. Marketing your voiceover business is about getting yourself in front of buyers, and buyers are everywhere. Those potential buyers exist in so many different places, and you will run across them in so many different ways in your day-to-day -day life. And maybe you're like Shelly, and maybe your house backs onto a golf course, and the Chamber of Commerce is doing a golf tournament, and there's an opportunity for you to make a banner and hang it on your patio door. Now, does it guarantee that Shelly's going to book any work? No, not specifically. Are people going to see it? Yep. Are they going to remember it? Probably. Is Shelly going to be top of mind with some people in the event that they do need voiceover work? I think so. She's literally got nothing to lose in doing this. And that's one of the reasons why Shelly gets to be a repeat guest, because she does crazy stuff like this all the time. And I love it. It is brilliant. 
always keeping herself open to the possibilities that exist out there and always being ready for them. Now, one of the other things that I've talked about in the podcast previously when it comes to kind of old school marketing techniques is business cards. In fact, I did an entire episode on business cards. And if you want to listen to it, if you missed it, go back to uh, the Everyday Vopreneur podcast, episode eight. And that one is all about business cards and tips for making better business cards. Because I believe 100% that even in the digital age of 2019, having business cards is so important. Having business cards is so valuable. We tend to get these things printed up and then we exchange them at voiceover conferences, which is great. I had, you know, a hundred plus business cards from VO Atlanta that, you know, uh, no offense, but I basically brought them home and threw them in the garbage because I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do with them. Yeah, all the people are in my database. They're people that I will think of when opportunities come. But a business card from a voice actor to another voice actor, it's not going to have the same kind of clout as a business card handed from a voice actor to somebody who could potentially hire you for voiceover. And that's exactly what happened with my calf coat. Listen to this story. This is a brilliant use of an old school marketing technique with a business card. So on the topic of traditional marketing, I was at a TED talk in Austin, Texas last year, and they had a film crew there that was you know there to document the, the entire event. So during one of the breaks, I approached one of the camera guys and asked uh, who was in charge. They pointed him out. And so I approached him, introduced myself. We swapped business cards. And I followed up about a week later with an email. About a month after that, he reached out and asked me to audition for an explainer video. I won the audition, got the job, and now they're a client. So keeping business cards on you at all times is a good idea, just in case you run into an opportunity like that to do a little bit of networking. Open yourself up to the opportunities, be where they are at, and use a somewhat different approach to get their attention. Three brilliant tools in marketing, and Mike literally covered every one of them with that. He was at a place where there were people who could potentially use him for voiceover. He was open to the opportunities. He wasn't just sitting there. He was actively pursuing, keeping his eyes peeled for where opportunity might exist. And then he took out that old school business card, approached the camera guy, and away we go. Something so simple, but something so brilliant. Are you afraid of marketing? Does the thought of having to market your voiceover business stress you out? Are you stuck? Because you don't even know where to begin. You don't know what you're supposed to say. You don't know what you're supposed to do. You don't understand how all of it works. You know that you're not booking from the casting sites the way that you want to. But you also know that there's got to be a better way. You just haven't figured it out. Let me help you. On May 30th, 2019, I am going to do my next live training event. It's called Marketing Basics for Voice Actors. How to stop being afraid and start finding work. In this two-hour live masterclass, which is going to happen via Zoom from 8 until 10 Eastern time, I am going to walk you through everything that you need to know to get started with marketing your voiceover business and to give you the confidence that you need to get started marketing your voiceover business. If you're afraid to market, chances are it's because you don't have the knowledge that you need. Once you have the knowledge that you need, your confidence level is going to go up and you're going to start doing the things that you need to do. So let me give you that knowledge so that we can boost your confidence, so that you can start doing the things that you need to do to get your voiceover business out there and to start booking more work. If you're unable to attend live, don't worry about it. There's going to be a video recording that will be made available to every single person that signs up. Registration is limited to 50 people. And again, this is going to happen on May the 30th, 2019 from 8 until 10 p.m. Eastern Time live via Zoom. To sign up, visit markscottcoaching.com forward slash marketing basics for voice actors. That's markscottcoaching.com forward slash marketing basics for voice actors. It's limited to 50 people. And if you can't make it live, you can still sign up anyway because you are going to get access to that video recording. Let's get you confident and let's get you marketing your voiceover business. markscottcoaching.com forward slash marketing basics for voice actors. Now, back to our show. Here's something that I want you to think about. A little bit of brainstorming for you to work on. A little bit of a homework assignment for this episode on old school marketing. Where are there places 
in your local community? Where are there places in your local geographic region? So, you know, I live in the middle of nowhere. Small town, literally in the middle of nowhere. But anything within an hour or maybe an hour and a half, that's still relatively local, right? So don't just limit yourself to the town that you live in because not everybody lives in New York or L.A. or Chicago. Think about a reasonable local geographic region to where you're at. And think about the possibilities that exist for you to get out and meet people and swap business cards. Are there networking events? Are there conferences? Are there different opportunities that can get you in front of people who could potentially use your voiceover services? And can you walk up? Can you meet them face to face? Can you shake their hand? Can you say hello? Which, by the way, is almost the equivalent of an audition when they get to hear you speak. Hand them a business card. Collect their business card in return. And then when you come home from that event, you take all of the business cards that you collected, you put them into your CRM, and you set reminders to follow up with those people in a week so that they don't forget about you. Because that's the next step in all of this, right? Collecting business cards is great, but only if you do something with them. You never know where those opportunities might exist. You know, people often ask me about gifts. And a lot of people see it like it's an obligation, I think that there is a time and a place to show thanks with a gift, but I don't think it's as necessary or as expected as some people think. And if I'm being completely honest, sometimes I think it feels a little bit more like desperation. Like you're so grateful for the work that you want to give them a gift in hopes that they'll come back to you. And my response to that is buy their loyalty with your work, not with your gifts. When the plumber comes to your house and fixes your toilet, does he send you a gift? For hiring him? I don't think so. When you take your car to the dealership and you get an oil change done, do they give you a gift for coming in and doing business with them? I've never got one, personally. So I'm not really sure where this came from. And again, I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm just saying that I don't think it's necessary every time. And I think there's a time and a place to use this old school type of technique. I have sent gifts to clients in the past. But generally, there's a reason for it. A prime example is when a client refers me to someone else. In that case, I'm always willing to send them a Starbucks card or an Amazon card, or if I know something a little bit more personal about them, maybe something that's more relevant. And so, you know, in situations like that, for example, I think there's a really great opportunity to send a gift. But I don't think that you need to send a gift after every job. I don't think you need to send a gift after every booking. I don't think you need to send a gift if the booking is over a certain dollar amount or or anything like that. I think that you let the work speak for itself. Do great work. Let that be enough. Take care of your clients in that way, giving them what they need, exceeding their expectations, and then save the gifts for those special opportunities so that they mean a little bit more. Keep your eyes peeled for unique opportunities to use a gift. Maybe it's a natural way of saying thank you, Or maybe it's a a natural extension of a conversation that has taken place. Maybe it's a mutual interest. Uh, You know, maybe you're both fans of the same sports team, something like that. There are times and places where they can stand out. And they can be a really great old school marketing technique. And Arwen Fonzen has one of those really great stories where the gift was a natural fit. It made sense. And I think you need to listen to this one. I've been doing voice work for about seven years, and my CRM game is pretty bad, if not completely non-existent. Thankfully, I've had clients like just reach back out to me for work, but I probably could do a better job and probably make way more bank if I did more of that. So, and especially going to VO Atlanta and Voxy Summit this year, which is the first time I went, woot woot, <laughs> um, I was really challenged to do more of that and maybe figure out a way to do it in a natural way for me. So the Monday after Voxy Summit, I had a session with a client and they mentioned that they really liked my music. And so in my head, I had a little ding go off and realized, hey, I should send this client one of my band t-shirts because everybody loves them and they're like super soft and... (laughs) I feel like I'm pitching my band t-shirt now. It's super cool. Um, No, I I just thought, okay, well, this is a natural way for me to say thank you to my client for the work that they've given me the past couple years. 
So I sent him a T-shirt. He actually sent me an email back today because he just received it. And he loved it. And hopefully that will help foster a relationship for years to come. So maybe you're not in a band and you're not going to be able to send somebody a band T-shirt. We don't all have that going on for us. But keep your eyes peeled for opportunities where a small gift, a token of appreciation, you know, just a way of saying thank you might seem like a really natural fit where it makes sense for it to take place so that it doesn't feel forced or it doesn't feel desperate or it doesn't feel like obligation. And it can be a really great way to build a relationship. The way that Arwen did it, brilliant. That's the way that you do it. If you're going to use an old school technique like that. When you boil all of this down, whether it's marketing in social media marketing and email marketing with paid advertising or marketing using some old school techniques like some of the different things that we talked about in this episode, you know, the banner, the postcard, the business card, marketing in its most simplistic and basic form is about getting as many potential buyers as possible to hear your voice every day. That's it. That's your prime objective. When you are not in the booth, actively recording voiceovers, your responsibility as a VOpreneur is to get your voice in front of as many potential buyers as possible every single day. And what I want you to keep your eyes open to is that that can happen literally everywhere. Those opportunities exist everywhere. You know, one of the reasons why I love the voiceover T and... Even the Veopreneur tea now as well. It's not just because it's about selling t-shirts. It's because it creates opportunities. I have got countless emails from voice actors who have bought a voiceover tea, who have wore it in a public place, whether it was at the grocery store or to a networking event or a sporting event or whatever, just wearing it in their day-to-day lives. They're in a restaurant and somebody sees it and asks them, What is voiceover? And now they have an opportunity to share their story. Now they have an opportunity to create a potential lead. And it has worked. People have booked jobs because of wearing those t-shirts in the right place at the right time and meeting the right person. And I don't say that because I'm trying to get you to buy a t-shirt. Although you can at vopreneur.com, by the way. I say that because I want it to be evidence of the fact that there are opportunities everywhere. Opportunities that don't require a smartphone. Opportunities that don't require a computer. Opportunities that require you to think a little bit different. To think a little bit more outside of the box. To think a little bit more old school. To keep yourself open to the opportunities that can literally happen everywhere and anywhere on any given day, regardless of what you're doing, whether you're sitting at the dentist office and all of a sudden it starts a conversation about voiceover, which leads to the opportunity of possibly doing their voicemail, or you're at the car dealership and you're having a conversation with them and that turns into a discussion about voiceover. And then you swap a business card with them and talk about maybe doing commercials for them. Whatever it is, those opportunities are out there everywhere. So be prepared for them and look for ways to get yourself in front of buyers that maybe are a little bit non-traditional because sometimes those are the things that are going to stand out most. Guys, thanks so much for checking out another episode. And I want to say a special thank you to Dana Rizzo, to Shelly Steven, to Mike Hathcoat and Arwen Fonzen for sharing your stories as part of this episode and and opening us all up to some different possibilities, to some different ways that we might be able to get ourselves in front of potential buyers. You know, when Shelly told me the story originally about doing the banner on a patio door for a golf tournament, I was joking with her that in my community, there's a giant pumpkin fest that happens in October. That is the town festival. And there's a parade that takes place in that town festival And I was saying, you know what? Maybe I need to make a float for the parade. Maybe I need to put a booth of some form or fashion in the box of my truck and I can stand there in front of a microphone and, you know, make it look like I'm recording voiceovers while my wife drives me around the parade route, which may sound ridiculous. But at the same time, I know some of you are going to think about stealing that. 
So do it. Totally old school, being in a parade. Totally outside of the box. I don't know of any other voice actor that's ever put themselves in a parade. Getting yourself in front of all of those eyes. I mean, who attends the parade? The people who own businesses in your town. The people who own businesses in your town are people that could potentially hire you for voiceover work. The opportunities are everywhere. Keep yourself open to them and getting yourself in front of them. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope it's inspired you to think of some creative and fun ideas to market your voiceover business. Once again, guys, make sure that you subscribe so you never miss an episode. The Everyday Vopreneur podcast is available everywhere. Find podcasts are given away for free, and that includes iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, and Google Play. And don't forget to jump online at vopreneur.com where you can pick up one of those voiceover tees or one of those vopreneur tees, and maybe that's going to lead to the next conversation that's going to be your next great voiceover booking. Don't forget to get on the Facebook group as well, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Vopreneur. Thanks for listening, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. The Everyday Vopreneur Podcast. Available everywhere fine podcasts are given away for free. Mostly, we think. Your number one marketing tool is your voiceover demos. When you're posting them online, you want to be sure they're playable on any device and with any browser. The Voice Sam Player does exactly that. Sign up at msvo.me slash msvoicesam and receive three months of Voice Sam for the price of one. Sign up now at msvo.me slash msvoicesam. And see. And that's a wrap. Thanks for hanging in. Thanks for hanging out. Want more VOpreneur goodness? Jump online at vopreneur.com. 